We are supposed to create our own opportunities. There are rules to be obeyed, Marlene, and I strongly suggest you start playing yours. When I hear somebody trying to sell me on a better life, my God, I ask myself, what is so bad about the life they got? I know y'all might be scared of what might happen if we do this, but maybe it's time we start thinking about what happens if we don't. You sure you don't want to work with me? You sure you don't want to join the movement? I'm good. So first of all, I'm going to say this on camera. It's really hard to do a TV series, get it produced and financed. And the fact that you guys were the largest led, not just team, but just cast that put this together, I say is a testament to your hard work. And I want to say congratulations. I'm so proud of you guys because this stuff is not easy. And we know it's even harder for us. So first, I want you guys to just, I know you've lived in the moment, but just me saying to you guys for real, this is an amazing feat. Um, I've been able to watch the first two episodes. And for me, I also know one of your writers, Andrew Burroughs. I know him pretty well. How this all, tell me about how this all came together, because you guys all do different things. But how did this project come together? Arnold, you can start, please. But, you know, it just comes to, you know, being an immigrant to this country. My parents are from Jamaica via England to here. And I just constantly wanted to find books and tell them about the Canadian Black experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, in doing so, you know, um, as well as doing theater and going across this country, um, I came across this um, common denominator of porters. And I didn't know anything about porters. They were just something that I saw in American movies and stuff like that. And uh, when I finally realized that these men and women that came from not just the southern states, but from the, the Caribbean, Trinidad, Jamaica, St. Kitts, Barbados, Grenada and so on, came to this country and actually changed policy. That was really, really empowering to me. And, you know, my parents are no longer um, uh, are with us, but I know that would have filled them with so much pride mm -hmm. to know that um, people from such these small little islands that didn't have much, but had these dreams for a better life for us you know, uh, would have really instilled them with a sense of pride. And these same men and women are actually uh, the reason why we have black middle class here, not just in Canada, but also in the United States. So with that being the inspiration of it all, and then connecting with uh, my, uh, my business partner and, and uh, co-creator, um, Bruce Ramsey, we came up with the idea of the Porter. <clears throat> and then of course, with Sienna and CBC, and then of course the team that you have here and them, um, them taking it and adding in their own passion and their own desires. It just brought it to another level. One of the things we were saying with the reporter before is it took a, the weight that was on our shoulders at the time got to be spread out with the people that you're interviewing right now. And, you know, anyone can take on uh, a gig and, you know, and, and if it hit, hits into troubled waters can take off and walk away, but we didn't. So that's why we knew by the grace of God, we were with the right group of people um, at the right time to get this to where it, uh, to where it is. And I love that because I mean, for me, this is pretty much a full circle moment. Um, our show has been on Omni for the last 18 years. And one of the, honestly, the reason we started the show was because of the lack of representation of us. So to see this now is so it makes us so proud because when we started, we didn't see a lot of us, you know, especially in the roles that you guys are doing, that you're actually creating this being on the executive team, not just someone just signing off on something. So, again, I really want to thank everyone for their time. I enjoyed the first two episodes. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm very curious to see what happens to Massey because he seems to get into a lot of trouble, you know, and, keep watching, bro. <laughs> you know, but I enjoy it. And I'm actually want to know about all the characters because I think they all have their own journeys. Like Marlene is doing something over here. She's good, but she got to do a little thing with the collection. But anyways, that's, that's another story. Yeah, so I really appreciate how everybody's being drawn out in different ways. And like I said, so proud of all you guys. Arnold, I met you a long time ago when you were doing Lord of Mercy. Like, a long time ago. You know what I mean? I've been here for a minute. Black comedy, man. Yeah. Another first. Another, another first. Another first. Right? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's why, again, for us, we're proud of it because we've been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. And we're always surprised because, again, this is the things. And I don't want anybody saying nothing. We have to make sure it gets the proper ratings because at the end of the day, they're looking at us well. So we're going to try to support as much as we can as well. So thanks again for your time. 
Thanks for watching Caribbean Vibrations. Follow us on social media at TV or visit our website, CaribbeanVibrationsTV.com. I'm your host and guide, Alan, and we'll see you next time on Caribbean Vibrations.